This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 500 of my viewers to use the link in the description will get a two month free trial. Brazil's capital used to be in Rio de Janeiro, but in 1960, Brazil moved its capital here in the middle of nowhere. Nigeria's capital used to be in Lagos, but in 1991, Nigeria moved its capital here again in the middle of nowhere. Australia's de facto seat of government was in Melbourne, but in 1927, Australia moved it to here. I think you get the point. Why did these countries and many others go through the tremendous trouble and expense to build brand new capital cities? On its face, it seems sort of crazy. But the governments had their reasons, stated and unstated, so let's just get right into it after some swooshy buildings. Like I was saying, it doesn't seem obvious why a government would want to move its capital from a major city to a place where almost nobody lives. But a couple of dozen countries have done it, 13 since 1950, and they can't all be crazy. Or maybe they are. But in every case, the government of these countries gave a certain rationale for their decision. They didn't just sneak out of town without any explanation, but what was the logic they used to defend their decision to the public? Before we can answer that question, we need to know what exactly a capital city is. I like this definition from an old journal article. A capital is the place where the political authority of a territorial unit is concentrated. Another word for political authority is power. Capitals are the physical manifestation of the power of the state. Now imagine you're a wealthy business owner or really anyone who wants to exert influence over the power of the government. Proximity is key, especially if this is before airplanes and video conferencing. For those people, having the capital in their city is an advantage and something worth fighting over. This was certainly true for three Anglophone countries, the United States, Canada, and Australia. And it brings us to our first reason, compromise. Each of these countries were once colonies of England and needed its own non-London seat of power. In each case, elites from rival cities and regions jockeyed to play host to the new national capital. In the US, representatives from the North preferred the capital in a major Northern city, like Philadelphia or New York, or a new site in Pennsylvania. Southern representatives, no surprise, wanted it in the South. The South got the capital in exchange for helping pay off the debts of Northern colonies. Up in Canada, the capital of the province of Canada, a British colony, bounced back and forth between Canada West and Canada East, the two parts of the province. In a move that is sort of like a mother telling two arguing toddlers that neither one gets to play with a toy, Queen Victoria located the capital in between, in the small town of Ottawa. Australia's story is similar to Canada's. Elites in Sydney and Melbourne both wanted to host the capital, but a compromise was reached that it would be a new city altogether, in between both of them, but no further than 100 miles from Sydney. Canberra, the pride of Australian capital territory, was the result. Long established countries can move their capital too, though they generally need a really good reason to do it. Leaders will often make an economic development argument for moving the capital. That's the number one reason Brazil moved its capital from Rio de Janeiro to Brasilia in 1960. During the presidential campaign of 1955, Juscelino Kubitschek ran on a ticket of 50 years of progress in five, with progress primarily meaning economic development. When he won, he aggressively pursued his economic development goals, and this included building a new capital city in the center of Brazil. At the time, nearly everyone in Brazil lived on the coast, and the north and west were considered empty. Building Brasilia meant incorporating the few people in that region into the national economy, and making it easier to exploit the natural resources in the region for economic gain. Did it work? Well, one study found that the economic impact of Brasilia on Brazilians was basically non-existent, except for those living in Brasilia itself. Not all capitals move for economic reasons. Sometimes leaders move a capital to bind a nation together. This was the reason why several African nations moved their capitals. Why was it so common there? For many years, Africa was divided among European powers as colonies. When the colonies became independent, they had to establish a nation and foster a feeling of nationhood among its citizens. Most of Africa's largest cities and capitals are along the coast, which was convenient for the colonizers, but they're not always the best locations to foster national unity across diverse cultures, religions, and landscapes. These new national governments also aim to consolidate power and establish legitimacy. Sometimes, it makes political sense to put the seat of power in the hinterlands, where the power of the state is the weakest. All of this played out in one of the most recent capital moves, in Nigeria. Lagos was the colonial capital of Nigeria, serving the British until independence in 1960. Nigeria has over 250 ethnic groups who speak many different languages. The nation is also split in half by Muslims and Christians. After independence, Lagos continued to grow into a massive metropolis. It's now the largest in Africa and one of the fastest growing in the world. 
the federal government felt that the traffic and overcrowding hindered the government's ability to govern. And in 1975, the government formed a panel to consider relocating the capital away from Lagos. They recommended a new city be built in a central location. They said that if the capital is located in a fairly central position, this will assist the effective administration of every part of the country as radiating influence of power would be more effective than the current polarized position of Lagos or of any other place similarly tucked away in one corner of the country. The panel noticed that some of the people in Nigeria felt disconnected from Lagos and that Lagos was controlled by one ethnic group and didn't represent the nation as a whole. In 1991, Nigeria's capital was moved from Lagos to a new city, Abuja, in the center of the country. It was now much more easily accessible for both the Muslim North and the Christian South. There is some evidence to suggest that moving the power base of a country out of a country's major city can reduce civil conflict and strife. So this reason isn't totally bogus. The last couple of reasons, on their face at least, were meant to help everyone in a country. A citizen in Brazil, for example, may want a stronger economy, and a citizen in Nigeria may want national unity. But not all reasons to move a capital are about what a citizen wants. Sometimes it's about what a ruler wants. And what does a ruler often want? To consolidate and hold on to power. Let's look at Kazakhstan as an example. Its capital prior to 1997 was in the largest city of Almaty. The government under President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev moved the capital from Almaty to the small city of Akmola in the middle of a semi-arid steppe with no obvious strategic benefit. The government's public rationale centered around Almaty's unsuitability as a capital city. It was hemmed in by a nearby mountain range, making expansion and economic growth difficult. Almaty also seemed more connected to the other former Soviet states than the rest of Kazakhstan. A change of geography for the capital would solve these problems. That was the official rationale, at least. What was the real rationale? President Nazarbayev used the move to remove his rivals and reward supporters. The capital move came with a reorganization of government agencies, a chance for Nazarbayev to remove disloyal members of the bureaucratic ranks. He further tested loyalty by making people move to the middle of nowhere. If they weren't willing to move for him, they weren't his true supporters and deserved to be left behind in Almaty, according to his logic. Furthermore, Nazarbayev rewarded allies in the oil and gas industry by giving them lucrative construction contracts to build the city. For Nazarbayev, Astana wasn't really about national unity or anything like that. It was about him holding on to power. New capital cities can appeal to power-hungry rulers in another way, too. It can really inflate their egos. Politicians love nothing more than to cut ribbons on infrastructure projects like highways, dams, and schools. Imagine cutting a ribbon on an entire city filled with buildings meant to be iconic and representative of an entire nation. That kind of thing is tempting for rulers. It's part of the reason why President Kubitschek built Brasilia so fast. He could open it during his presidential term. Similarly, President Babangida ensured Abuja would be finished during his term. And hey, the ego benefits keep paying off. Brasilia's airport is named after Kubitschek, and there's a memorial for him in the city as well. Astana was straight up renamed to Nur Sultan after Nazarbayev in March 2019. As you can imagine, there are problems with building a new capital city from scratch when ego is an important reason for doing so. Speaking as an urban designer, planned capital cities are the equivalent of building a Frankenstein's monster instead of letting someone grow organically. It's nearly impossible to build a great city from scratch, let alone a city filled with oversized monuments and government office buildings. And a leader who already prioritized power over his citizens is probably not going to go above and beyond to make sure the new residents have a human-scale, inviting city. Lucio Costa's modernist plan for Brasilia was famous for being bleak and auto-oriented, for example. But there is some hope. Washington, D.C. was a planned capital that turned out pretty nice after an initial awkward phase where almost nobody lived there. Sometimes you just need to grow into a city, I guess. So there you have it. Capital cities get moved to random places for reasons such as compromise, economic development, national unity, power consolidation, and ego. Those are reasons, though they aren't all good ones. But that hasn't stopped other leaders considering capital moves. Leaders throughout Argentina's history have considered moving the capital from Buenos Aires. As recently as 2014, President Cristina Kirchner floated the idea of moving the capital to Santiago del Estero. So, world leaders may not have learned their lesson about moving capital cities, but you can learn a thing or two over at Skillshare. Skillshare has been invaluable to me as I've developed this channel. I learned 3D isometric illustration from a Skillshare class taught by DKNG Studios to do some of the awesome animations that have appeared in my last couple of videos. 
If you don't have a specific need for 3D isometric illustration, that's understandable. And there are 25,000 classes on the platform on topics like business, design, technology, and more. You can check out Skillshare for free by being one of the first 500 to visit the link in the description. And if you decide you love it, and you probably will, premium membership is super affordable, starting at less than $10 per month. So consider supporting the channel and go check it out.